Hello, I am Vital ASMR. And today I am going to be doing a requested video. Because we have us a request for a video talking about Norwegian politics. So that's exactly what you go I'm going to be doing today. I am, as some of you probably already guessed and some of you already know, Norwegian. I'm from Norway, born and raised in Norway. And Norway, just like all countries, has its own political system, its own culture, its own everything, of course. So, before we get to the political system, I'm also going to talk a little about Norwegian culture, just to add some interesting tidbits for those of you guys who may not be that interested in the politics of Norway, but finds the culture more interesting. It's mostly going to be about the politics today, talk, the political parties, mm -hmm. the political system and everything. So, uh, for those of you who want to immerse yourself in uh, Norway and Norwegian stuff, well, this is for you guys. And I'm going to be talking from a very neutral political point of view today, so I'm not going to be taking any type of political side or anything like that. I'm not going to say like which Norwegian party is the best or something weird like that. I'm just going to be taking a neutral approach today. Um, okay, so first of all, what you have to understand about the Norwegian people is that our culture sort of shapes how our, political, how our politics and political system work. We Norwegians, we are generally a calm and peaceful type of people, and Norwegians, they love peace. They love peace. And Norway, Norwegians and Norway, and now I'm talking in general, of course, does like to help the world outside, you know, by sort of doing some charity, giving money to people who need it, stuff like that. But they also sort of want to keep the trouble of the world uh, a little at a distance, so that Norway remains a peaceful country. Uh, Norway, Norwegians love peace, and Norway, Norwegians are generally a very peaceful people. Mm, peaceful people. Uh, we've, we've grown accustomed to a cold climate, or winters are often very long, very dark, and very cold which, of course, gives the light of Christmas additional meaning to many of us. And that cold climate sometimes means that Norwegians can be a little difficult to get to know. Uh, like, Norwegians aren't always the first ones to say hello to a stranger. It sometimes takes a little time to get to know a Norwegian. But once you do get to know them, most of them, most Norwegians, are very nice. But they just, just have to sort of be a little more patient and use more time to get to know a Norwegian. Mm. Uh, mm. And, uh, well, Norwegians also have a very strong national identity. We, we love Norway. And we are very proud to be Norwegians. We are not ashamed, we are very proud to be Norwegians. So, uh, and when it comes to political opinions, most Norwegians will be very accepting of most kind of political opinions. They may disagree with you, but they'll still be polite and nice to you, regardless. Mm. And that's sort of how things in Norway to work. Uh, Norwegians are very used to uh, people having different views within a country, like in any country, of course. And usually, here in Norway, that doesn't cause us to become enemies or anything. We're usually friends with each other, regardless of which political spectrum we are. So Norwegians are often, I mean, not necessarily all Norwegians, but most, if not many Norwegians, are often very good at putting their personal political views aside when they talk to other people. So you can be like a super conservative person 
and talk about your views and I think on Norwegian will accept you for who you are. But you can also be a super progressive person and on Norwegian will also accept you for who you are. They may not always agree with your views, but they will accept you regardless. Um, as for... Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so mostly it is difficult, I believe, to offend a Norwegian, but one thing you may not want to do is like to say bad things about Norway. You know, yes, Norwegians can be critical of aspects of Norwegian society and the political system. They can be critical of our own government, but we have a very strong national identity and it's not really nice if you know you're a visitor to Norway and you start to attack Norway as a nation and stuff like that. That's, that then you probably will experience what the tone will become a little colder, you know. And the reason I'm saying this is because we in Norway we in Norway are very proud of being Norwegians. Mm, it's a very strong national identity. It's in a calm way often. But um, the way we show it is through law for our traditions, especially on Constitution Day. And our Constitution was written in 1814, the year of miracles, as we call it in Norway. That's when Norway got its own Constitution. And it didn't take many decades afterwards before Norway got its full-fledged own political system. With political parties and stuff like that. And in 1905... Norway got full independence and got its own king. And now we're getting to the heart of it. Now we're getting to the political part of today's video. So, uh, so but keep that in mind as I talk about politics. Norwegians are good at putting personal disagreements aside. We love peace. And in Norway it is very usual to... Uh, sort of be more accepting of rules and regulations. There's not a lot of protests towards that, actually. And, uh, and all, most Norwegians have received at least basic education. So that's also an important tidbit to take, have in mind when we talk about Norway. So, uh, mm. Norway's parliament is called for the storting, the storting. And this is, as I said, the Parliament of Norway. That's where all the political decisions are made and stuff like that, you know. And that's where the various prominent politicians speak, you know, in the main hall of the Storting. And I've actually visited our country's parliament, which is located in the capital, Oslo, once. I visited once in my life. It was back when I was in college, 12 years ago. I visited the parliament on a class tour and we were on the balcony and we were looking down at the main hall and we were looking on some of the prominent politicians of that time speaking. Not the most prominent I believe, but some, not when I was there at least, but, but some of them. And they were speaking in the hall, having a meeting and stuff like that, you know. So, uh, mm. and we got a guided tour around the entire parliamentary building, which was kind of cool actually. We also got to see the portraits of the various prime, minist prime ministers of Norway because all the various prime ministers of Norway have a portrait in a certain hall or place within that parliament. Mm. So, mm. so, yeah. So, a prime minister is sort of the political leader of the country where the ceremonial head of state is the king. And our current king is King Harald. He has been king of Norway since 1991, I believe. That's when his father, the previous king, passed away. And once Harald passes away, it will be the crown prince, Prince Håkon, who will become the next king. And when Håkon one day in the fire of shooter, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully he will live long, but when Håkon one day passes away, it will be his daughter, Ingrid Alexandra, who will become queen, provided the monarchy of Norway still exists at that point in time, of course. So, uh, 
the king cannot make any political decisions, but he's an important symbolic figure. And he's sort of considered a unifying sort of head of state for the country. And he of course has to maintain political neutrality. He cannot take any political side or stuff like that. And after an election, he invites, after a parliamentary election, he invites the candidate uh, who is most likely to form a successful government, which is of course one of the party leaders. He invites that person to the castle and then that party leader travels to the castle and gets the task of forming a government. So that's some of the king's duty, mm. other than that, the king has a lot of ceremonial duties in love. Mm. So, mm. but he is often a popular and appreciated figure. Even talk the royal family right now is in a kind of a political uh, scandal and storm. But that is a matter for another day, we're not going to be talking about that today. No. Uh, mm. So, how do you form governments in Norway? How does it work? Well, you have to win an election, and winning an election in Norway is kind of complicated. Because in Norway, in modern day politics of Norway, you have to rely on coalitions, like in a lot of European countries. And you know, many decades ago, the Labour Party was so strong, they could rule alone. But in the modern day, Coalitions have become more common because there is no party now anymore who is strong enough to rule on their own. So we have to find parliamentary support and coalition partners. Mm, I believe that uh, to form a government in Norway, you have to have at least a majority of like 85 or 86 representatives. It's something like that. It's the mid 80s somewhere. And that's the majority you need to form a government in Norway. Our current government consists of the left, the established left-wing Labour Party and the centrist Centre Party. And then we also have the parliamentary support of the Socialist Left Party. So our current government is left-wing, but if current polls are any indication, we will shift right during the parliamentary election next year. In Norway there is parliamentary elections every fourth year. So the last one was in autumn 2021, the next one is in autumn 2025. And once a new government is elected, it will often take about a month or so before uh, a new government is formed. So our election is in early September, but if it will often take to mid late October before the new government inaugurates. You know. mm. Because that's also when the parliament opens each year. And the parliament is sort of opened each year around October with sort of this formal gathering and dinner at the castle. Mm. Where the king and where the king also speaks. So, uh, uh, so yeah, the castle of the royal family of Norway, which actually lies... It lies just opposite of the Parliament of Norway because you can say the Parliament lies down here uh, at Karl Johan Square and then the castle lies way up there, you know. It's not a long walk from the Parliament to the castle. They lie, they lie in the vicinity of each other. Anyway, uh, the two most likely parties to get the Prime Minister post is the left-wing Labour Party and the right-wing established Conservative Party, only in Norway that Conservative Party is called for right, or as it's said in Norwegian, høyre. Because uh, right, the word right, means høyre in Norwegian. So, uh, mm. so, and that's the established Conservative Party of Norway. And that's the two parties most likely to get the Prime Minister post. Mm for either the left or right. And for the last decade or so, the two prominent Prime Minister's candidates of Norway have been our incumbent Prime Minister, Jonas Gahr Støre, who is the party leader of the Labour Party, 
and the party leader of right, Erna Solberg, who is also our previous Prime Minister and quite possibly our next Prime Minister because she is looking to return to the position next year. So, uh, mm. Erna Solberg was actually Prime Minister for eight years uh, from 2013 to 2021. Back then, in 2013, she won the election and uh, she and the Conservative Coalition won the election and she formed a Conservative government mm, with Conservative Coalition partners. And she then also actually became the first Conservative female Prime Minister and the second female Prime Minister in Norwegian history. The first female Prime Minister in Norwegian history was uh, Gro Harlem Brundtland, a very famous fig fig political figure in Norwegian history. She was Prime Minister in the 1980s at various points of times in the 1980s and 1990s and she was Prime Minister and party leader for the Labour Party. So, but she was also the first female Prime Minister and she was sort of considered a mother to the entire country. She was a very popular Prime Minister. But uh, Erna Solberg was also actually quite a popular Prime Minister during her eight years in power. Uh, in 2017 she won re-election, winning over the left-wing coalition and back then Jonas Gardstöre lost, you know, so he didn't become Prime Minister. But when in 2021, you know, the Conservatives had been reigning for eight years, people wanted change, so because of that in 2021, the left-wing coalition won, and Jonas Gajstøre, who has been party leader of the Labour Party for 10 years, became Prime Minister. And now, those two are sort of set for a new rematch next year, and it looks like Solberg and the Conservatives are going to win that election, because right now the polls of the left side isn't looking that great, and that's of course due to people struggling financially and stuff like that. In addition, yeah, and of course Erna Solberg is also a pretty popular Prime Minister candidate, mm. despite some recent scandals she's been involved in, especially in terms of her husband, but that's also a story for another time. Uh, mm. Before Jonas Gajstøre was the leader of the Labour Party, Jens Stoltenberg was the leader of the Labour Party and he was Prime Minister of Norway from 2005 to 2013. And I'm sure that's a very famous and renowned name to a lot of, renowned name to a lot of you because he was chief of NATO for 10 years up until recently, became chief of NATO, the NATO alliance in 2014 and was that until 2024. But before that, he was our Prime Minister, and he was also a very popular Prime Minister, from 2005 to 2013. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So, Norwegian governments, especially in modern times, have been pretty stable, uh, despite the wall, despite the main parties having to rely on coalition partners, and per Norwegian constitutions, new elections cannot be called. New elections cannot be called in Norway in the middle of the period. So if a government, for example, had collapsed right now, it would not be possible to hold an election before next year, the scheduled election next year. Instead, what would most likely happen is that the opposition would move into government without any election. So that's what happened if the government collapsed right now. The last time in Norwegian history a government collapsed was in 2000. Back then, the government of the, Christ the Prime Minister and Le uh, Prime Minister for the Christian Democrats, Kjell Magne Bonnevik, his government collapsed and Jens Stoltenberg and the Labour Party moved into the position because they were the opposition. So Jens Stoltenberg became Prime Minister the first time in 2000 and he remained Prime Minister to 2001. However, the Conservative Coalition won the 2001 election, so Bonnevik returned as Prime Minister in 2001 and remained Prime Minister to 2005. Uh, uh, it's important to point out that at some points in the past in Norwegian history, there have been other parties that have held the Prime Minister post as well 
including in the after the Second World War. And this is the centrist party, held the prime minister position at one point during the 1960s. And the Christian Democrats have held the position twice. But now in recent days, it is considered the most likely that it will be either the Labour Party or the Right Party, which holds the position. You know, there has been no other party than those two, which has held the position since 2005. So, uh, mm. so yeah. I can also just add a little, a small interesting fact. The very first uh, uh, party leader of the established conservative, the very first female party leader of the established conservative right party was actually a woman who was called for Kasi Kullman Fiva and she was party leader back in the 1990s but she never became prime minister but she was the first part female party leader of this party Bernard Solberg is the second party leader of this party mm. so and she has been party leader for that party for about 20 years now so it's probably only a matter of a few years time before both Labour and the Right Party gets a new party leader. Mm. And both parties have their heirs, you know. Uh, in the Right Party there are several heirs. One of them is the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ine Eriksen. She is the favourite to take over from Solberg one day. Uh, she is a very calm and diplomatic woman and she's very liked. And then you have an openly gay man called for Henrik Asheim. Henrik Asheim, he is also a deputy, or I'm not sure he's still deputy, I believe he is. He is a deputy of the right party and he's openly gay and he's um, and he's also sort of uh, known as a very enthusiastic guy and also seen as a potential future party lead. On the Labour side of things, you have Tonja Brenna, the Minister of Social Affairs or Work Social Affairs. She is known as a somewhat tough minister and, and who is considered quite efficient. But she is kind of a little controversial in some too. Not everyone, yeah, she is a little controversial, but, but she is considered quite efficient and she is considered sort of the princess of the Labour Party. And then you have the Labour Party Prince and the favourite to become the next party leader, as of right now, Jan Christian Vestre, who is the Minister of Health, uh, the Minister of Health Affairs. You know, he was previously the Minister of, uh, he is the Minister of Healthcare Affairs. He was previously the Minister of sort of business stuff, and he's also a deputy, and he's right now the favourite to become the next party leader. So one of those two could potentially be a future Prime Minister of Norway. But now I've been talking a lot about details and stuff, and I hope some of you guys found what relaxing as possible. Some find you, some of you found it a little boring, but, but I don't know. But I, now I want to talk about the various political parties. So some people who are foreigners may have said that Norway is a very liberal country. That is true in a way, when it comes to international politics. A lot of people are liberal, but when it comes to internal politics in Norway, the picture gets much more complicated. Because internal in Norway, there is a much more bigger divide between the conservative and the left wing. It's just what the conservative of Norway have sort of aspects in the politics which could be considered liberal to some other countries. Uh, so what you have to get here is what, what Norwegians care about is some of the same stuff which are in other countries like economy, especially economy right now because there are actually, even though we're a wealthy country, there are actually some middle class and poor Norwegians who are struggling a little right now because of a difficult economic situation. And there is immigration, of course, which a lot of Norwegians are focused on, and there is crime. 
so uh, you know in crime levels because there has been some rise certain places in crime lately so this is things which are concerns to Norwegian voltage but then there are also things which are not concerns to Norwegian voltage for example free education that's that's granted in Norway Norway is a wealthy country so everyone has the right to free education you know because Norway can afford it healthcare everyone has free healthcare in Norway because and before some of you think that sounds very privileged yes but Norway is a wealthy country and because of that probably the whole free healthcare thing isn't controversial in our country the abortion question is not really that much of a big deal in a country talk the Christian Democrat party has that as one of the issues they want to where the party was sort of wants to take that issue but most of the other parties tend to shy away from that issue so mostly right now it's mostly economy immigration and crime so mm. so what you should also know is that the politician the politicians of our parliament even Tokyo can be very disagree a lot in debates and stuff like that are very friendly to each other it's very usual that party leaders from the various parties greet each other meet each other sometimes even eat together and that's sort of how it is in Norway but our political disagreements doesn't get in the way of friendship or companionship in Norwegians are very good at putting political disagreements aside uh, so uh, but now I'm going to talk about the various political parties before we're done for today so you can of course ask a Norwegian are you conservative or are you liberal but there's just one problem with that while a Norwegian may answer that question quite honestly the Norwegian, com the Norwegian political system is a little more complicated than conservative or liberal so you have the I'm just going to use your right you have the far right to your right the far right and you have the far left the far left mm. and then you have the centrist you have the greens and then you have the established left and the established right so first of all the labor party which has gradually become a little more conservative in recent decades and not everyone in the labor party has agreed with that direction trust me but but it has however the labor party is the established social democratic left party of Norway well led by Jonas Gajstøre who is also a current prime minister the right party is the established conservative party of Norway well led by Erna, Sol Erna Solberg our previous prime minister and quite possibly our next prime minister too we can't of course say that for certain yet but if the polls are any indication that's sort of the direction it is going um, and then you have the far right of Norway they are called for the Progress Party and they have been a party since the 70s, 80s. They were led by a far-right populistic guy previously, in, back in the 80s to 2000s, called for Carl E. Hagen. He was a, quite a controversial figure in Norwegian politics. He wanted strict immigration levels, actually he at one point even said he wanted, I believe he even sort of wanted all immigration out of Norway you know it yeah so the progress party were against high taxes were for strict immigration and were tough on crime they're perhaps the closest you have to the more populist conservative parties seen in certain other countries uh, the progress party today is led by a woman called for Sylvie Listhauk and she is sort of aiming it seems for government position next year she wants she and progress party want a coalition want a coalition between the right party and the progress party mm. they want they want the established right and the far right party to form a coalition and want to keep the more centrist right parties out of the government so because uh, but then again both centrist conservative parties want a coalition with the established right party and both parties want to keep the far right of the government so it's kind of complicated anyway 
So that's the far right of Norway. So if you are more of a populist, far right Norwegian, you may vote the Progress Party if you're concerned with crime and immigration and taxes. Um, if you are one for Christian values, you may vote the Christian Democrats. They were once a much bigger party. They've been reduced a lot in recent decades. But the Christian Democrats are the party for Christian values, fab Christian values, families, traditions, stuff like that. And then you have um, a party called for Venstre, which means left in English. And Venstre is sort of a centrist party, and they they are right now allied with the conservative coalition. But they are a centrist party, and they have some very green ideals. But they're a little more moderate than the other Green Party we're going to be talking about. And then you have the Centrist Party, which is currently in government, mm. well led by Trygve Slagsvold Vedum, who is also right now our Minister of Finance. He is, uh, and the Centrist Party are the agrarian party, the agrarian party of Norway. They're essentially the party for farmers, essentially. I'm simplifying a lot now, but I think it's best to just simplify a bit. So, yeah, you have the established Labour Party, of course, which is essentially meant to be the party of workers and stuff like that. And then you have uh, the party of social democratic. Then you have the socialist left party, and they are, as the name implies, socialists. They want more socialistic policies in Norway, and they give parliamentary support to the current government, but they're not in government. However, because they sort of want much more socialistic policies and policies further to the left, essentially. Then you have the Green Party of Norway. And the Green Party, well, they're of course the ones uh, who are for climate change and green values. And the Green Party of Norway has been known to commit radical proposals. They were on the rise last decade in the 2020s, in the 2010s, because then there were some people in Norway who thought climate change was very a very important issue. But they were also a very controversial party because they came with a few radical suggestions. So they caused quite a political stir here in Norway. But now recently the storm around them has calmed down. They aren't that prominent anymore because now other issues have come into focus, like the economy and immigration and crime and stuff like that. Mm. So that's the Green Party of Norway. And the Green Party are willing to ally both with the Conservatives and the left, but they're more likely to ally with the left, of course, because that's more in alignment with their political values. And then you have the far, the far left, Red Party, the Red Party, and the Red Party is actually the successor of the Communist Party of Norway, and the Red Party were far left. We are kind of we are also populist party, but they are the far left populist party of Norway, and they are also in parliament. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> an interesting fact: the previous party of t the previous party leader of the Red Party was actually caught. Uh, stealing sunglasses. Uh, last year, so we had to assign as party leader. <laughs> uh, I just had to add that scandal because I just a funny scandal really. I don't know why a party leader would need to steal sunglasses, but it became a scandal and he had to resign. So yeah. So now there is a different person leading that party. A woman I believe I, I don't remember her name right now so you'll excuse me but uh, anyway. But uh, the Red Party is at least the far left part of Norway, and much like the far right party, they're populist, they're for the middle class, but they're far left. And they have very far left ideals. So if you are dissatisfied with the establishment, and, but you are on the left side of politics, and you're like a populist, and a leftist populist, and you're very for the middle class, then you probably will vote the Red Party, you know. Mm, because, yeah, so it's, so that's the various parties of Norway, and the Red Party does not contribute to any coalition right now, they exist sort of on the fringes, 
and on the outside of the coalitions. But we're of course more likely, if we were to join a coalition, it would of course be a leftist coalition. Mm. That's obvious. So uh, there's also one other party in government which is not located on any political spectrum because it gained one representative last election and it hasn't really been prominent. It's been a, a sort of a party which is sort of revolve which sort of revolves around healthcare <laughs> around not healthcare but it revolves around saving some hospital or or some some place up in a place in north i'm sorry i can't be more specific but yeah but there's at least one other part in the parliament but it has only one representative and it's just part of a movement what was sort of around 2021 so anyway and there are of course also quite a few other parties in the norway in norway who is not represented in parliament mm. so uh, yeah so I, I believe that's more than enough about Norwegian politics. I hope I've described Norwegian politics uh, well to you guys. Uh, I can add that in Norway a prime minister is likely to sit out the four-year period because Norway's political systems are usually very stable, you know, except for the government around 1997 to 2000 which collapsed, but that government did not have a strong foundation, so it was kind of inevitable that that government would collapse eventually. Well, uh, now I've been talking more enough about Norway's system and political system and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope this gave you some insight into Norwegian politics and Norwegian stuff and systems. Wish you all the best. Thank you.